welcome back to the animal physiology classroom and in the previous presentations we have seen what is osmoregulation and also you have learned osmoregulation in crustaceans okay and now we are going to see osmoregulation in fishes okay osmoregulation in fishes right okay under that these are all the things we are going to see what is osmoregulation and what is this hypertonic hypotonic and isotonic solutions and what is that endosmosis exosmosis and what are fissions and the characteristics of fissions and osmoregulation in fishes okay so as you know what is osmoregulation it is the process of maintaining salt and water balance across the membranes within the body and then uh, this also you know uh, the three types of solutions that is the hypertonic solution isotonic solution and hypotonic solution where in the case of hypertonic solution the solution outside the cell is more concentrated so what will happen water move will move out of the cell okay so the cell shrinks in isotonic solution both the concentration inside and outside will be same so there will be no change and in hypotonic solution there will be more concentration inside the cell okay right so what happens the cell swells and sometimes it burst okay right and now go to endosmosis in the previous presentations you have studied all these in detail uh, so i just go through and uh, what is this endosmosis the moment of water inside the cells when the cell is placed in a hypotonic solution that means the moment of water molecules outside from outside within the cell that is endosmosis and exosmosis in the case of exosmosis what happens there will be moment of water from inside to us outside as a result the cell will shrink okay and now we will go to fishes what are fishes familiar fishes okay fishes are aquatic vertebrates and they live in fresh water sea water as well as in brackish water and they are homeostatic animals they maintain a constant concentration of their body fluid and also they are osmo regulators and now we'll see the characteristics of fishes they have streamlined body they have very good eyesight gills help them to breathe fins help them to steer and balance tail help to move along okay the basic characteristics of the fishes and now we'll pass on to osmoregulation in fishes in fishes also we can see different types okay so based upon that now we are going to see first about the osmoregulation in fresh water teleost then in marine teleost then in migratory fishes then in marine elasmobranchs and then in fresh water elasmo so here you should know what are teleosts and what are migratory fishes and what are elasmobranchs so first we will see what are teleosts and elasmobranchs okay teleost fish are bony fishes and elasmobranch fishes are cartilaginous fishes they are made of cartilage in the case of teleost fish they have bones in the case of cartilaginous i mean elasmobranchs they have cartilage even the tip of our nose is made of cartilage that is an example okay okay so the gills of the teleost fishes are usually covered by the operculum see here this is the operculum this is the bony fish and this is the cartilaginous fish i think now you understand better okay the bony fishes are made up of bones and these cartilaginous fishes consist of cartilage the gills of the teleost fishes are covered by operculum this is the operculum the covering of the gills 
and then in the case of uh, elasmobranchs they have no operculum no covering but they have slits called gill slits you can see here gill slits that is the main difference between teleos and elasmobranchs okay. right now we will pass on to osmar regulation in fresh water bony fish fresh water teleos example labio rohita see in the case of this labio rohita the body fluid of the freshwater teleo fish is hypertonic okay their body fluid is hypertonic and the fresh water is hypotonic so what happens what happens entosmosis occurs entosmosis occurs that means water will move from outside within the body within the body so that is called entosmosis so in the case of freshwater teleos entosmosis occurs okay so during endosmosis what happens when more and more water enters inside i mean when there is endosmosis going on what will happen more water there will be excess water the volume of the body fluid increases so what will happen within the body of the fish there will be excess of water and this should be removed okay and this will be removed by a special structure called glomerular kidney this is the glomerular kidney right it helps to remove the excess water so what will happen now along the urine some amount of salt is also lost okay so during endosmosis more water gets inside so the excess water is removed by the glomerular kidney in the form of urine so now what happens through the urine more salt is lost and this lost salt is maintained by the chloride cells of the gills okay and this is maintained by the chloride cells of the gills this is the chloride cells present in the gill region okay right that is how it functions in the case of freshwater teleost and now come to the marine teleost in the marine bony fish how it occurs and what happens see in the case of marine teleos it is just opposite it is just opposite that is the teleos marine teleos is hypotonic and the sea water is hypertonic okay so what happens exosmosis occurs water moves outside so during exosmosis what happens the volume of the body fluid decreases because from the body of the fish more water is going out because of excess muscle so what happens more water is lost so to balance this water i mean to compensate this lost water this fish will drink lot of sea water so what will happen if we drink more and more and more salt water what will happen there will be excess salt then the excess salt is secreted out by the chloride secretory cells okay the excess salt is secreted out by the chloride secretory cells of the gill right and here you should know another process that is osmotic dehydration osmotic dehydration see it is during the process of osmosis sometimes what happens more and more water is lost from the body of the fish okay when more and more water is lost from the body of the fish sometimes it leads to dehydration sometimes it leads to dehydration so these marine animals face this problem during ex osmosis when more and more water is uh, osmoted out i mean given out what will happen or moved out when more water flows out of the body of the uh, fish what will happen there will be dehydration so what will happen it makes the fish dry in sea water 
right? So, to avoid this problem, this marine teleost has a glomerular structure which reabsorbs water from the urine. So, it will prevent the loss of water in the urine. Okay, so for everything, I mean, that is how this mechanism functions. Okay, that is how this mechanism functions. Osmo regulation, how the salt and water balancing is going on, how excess water is maintained, how excess salt is maintained, how, uh, what happens when there is dehydration and what is helping them. So in the case of marine organisms, it is the glomerular structure that reabsorbs the water from the urine and prevent the loss of water in the urine. Okay. And now let's pass on to migratory fishes. So now the teleost part is finished. We have seen how osmoregulation occurs in the case of freshwater bony fish or teleost and also marine bony fish or teleost. Now we'll pass on to migratory fishes. What are these migratory fishes? See, there are two types of migratory fishes, anadromous fishes and catadromous fishes. The first one is anadromous fishes. The fishes that migrate from the sea to the freshwater for spawning. Example, salmon. They move or migrate from the sea to the fresh water for spawning. They are said to be anadromous fishes. And what these catadromous fishes? They migrate from fresh water to the sea for spawning. So for a purpose. Example, eel. Okay. So these are the two types of migratory fishes for spawning. If they move from the sea to the fresh water, they are anadromous. If they move from the fresh water to the sea, it is called the catamus. Okay. Okay. Now we'll see how, I mean, uh, this osmoregulation uh, happens in the case of migratory fishes because they have to live both in seawater, I mean, part of the life in seawater and part of the life in fresh water. So, what is happening? See, the same thing. See, when the fish is in seawater, the body fluid is hypotonic and the seawater is hypertonic. So, exosmosis occurs. So, just like the marine teleost. So, what process occurs in the marine teleost? Just refer the previous slides for the explanation. The same process happens here. Okay. So, the body of the fish will be hypotonic and the surrounding medium will be hypertonic. So, exosmosis occurs. Right? Now, when the same fish comes to the freshwater body, what will happen? The freshwater will be hypertonic, body fluid will be hypertonic and the freshwater will be hypotonic. So, End osmosis occur just like freshwater teleost. Just like freshwater teleost. So end osmosis occurs. Okay, now we'll pass on to catadromous fish. Catadromous fish. See, when they are in freshwater, it resembles freshwater teleost. Just like the freshwater teleost. Okay. So, what is happening? The body will be hypertonic. The surrounding medium will be hypotonic. So, endosmosis occurs. Okay. But when they are in seawater, it is just like marine teleos. Okay. What is happening? Yeah. The body will be hypotonic and the surrounding medium will be hypertonic. So, what happens? Exosmosis occurs. Okay. Right. And now we pass on to the third part that is osmoregulation in marine elasmobranchs or cartilaginous fissures. Okay, so we have seen osmoregulation in teleost, then osmoregulation in migratory fissures and now osmoregulation in elasmobranchs. So in the case of marine cartilaginous fissures, they retain urea 
and trimethyl amine oxide in the blood and body fluids so what happens the concentration of the body fluid increases than that of the marine tissue so what happens isotonic mechanism okay since they retain urea and trimethyl amine oxide in the blood and body fluid the concentration of the body fluid also increases so what happens there is iso so now no osmosis okay okay then osmo regulation in marine elasmobranchs they gain salt through diffusion and by eating salt rich marine food they normally feed on the other uh, marine organisms so these elasmobranchs they gain salt how they maintain okay by eating salt rich marine food then excess salt is secreted out by rectal glands present in the gut region then urea is retained in the body fluid and hence the body fluid becomes isotonic to sea water so this will prevent osmotic dehydration unlike marine bony fish here it prevents osmotic dehydration then osmo regulation in freshwater elasmobranchs bracts they are descended from marine ancestors so they retain the urea to some extent so here in the case of uh, elasmobranchs i mean freshwater elasmobranchs they also retain urea to certain extent so body fluid is hypertonic and fresh water is hypotonic so just like the same mechanism uh, like fresh water so that is all about the osmo regulation in elasmo branchs okay right so in the today's lesson you should know uh, how osmo regulation takes place in the case of bony fishes or teleost then how it takes place in migratory fishes that is anadromous fishes and catadromous fishes and then you should know how osmo regulation occurs in cartilaginous fishes or elasmobranchs okay that's all for today thank you